Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. A flagpole three meters tall cast a shadow five meters long. At the same time, a tree nearby cast a shadow of 82 meters. How tall is that tree? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that will definitely help me out. Okay, let's take a look at this question one more time before I show you the answer. So a flagpole three meters tall cast a shadow five meters long, right? So you kind of have to kind of, uh, you know, visualize this problem. At the same time, a tree nearby cast a shadow of 82 meters. How tall is that tree? Okay, so that is the problem. Let's take a look at the answer. The tree is 49.2 meters tall. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving math problems that involve ratios and proportions because that's what we're going to be doing right here. Now, there is another approach to solve this problem that would involve trigonometry, but that is just like, you know, doing uh, too much work to solve this problem because... Um, we can use a basic ratio and proportion setup to find the answer. Now, even if you don't, um, uh, if you don't even realize, hey, uh, I got the right answer, but I don't even know what you're talking about, ratio and proportion. Well, you know what? Uh, that's why I always encourage everyone when they watch my videos. Now, if you're um, new to my YouTube channel, well, welcome. But I do a lot of word problems and never say, hey, this is an algebra word problem or, you know, use algebra to solve this problem. I always leave it open-ended because there's different ways, uh, different creative ways to solve um, a variety of problems. So you should never not try to solve a problem. But if you are still a little bit lost, no worries. In a couple minutes, you'll be looking like this person. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. Okay, so first things first. First, we are dealing with a math word problem. You always want to use the rule of three when solving any problem in mathematics, especially a word problem. Uh, and the, world, uh, the rule of three, this is my rule, but it served me well and my students uh, very well. And that is read the problem at least three times. Even though you understand the problem, you know, problems have, uh, in particularly word problems, have a lot of information. Okay, and if you don't really absorb all that information and visualize what's going on, and in particular really understand what the question is, you can kind of um, you know get excited about solving the problem, but then you might go down the wrong road because you didn't really understand the problem. It's a very common um, kind of mistake that a lot of uh, people do when solving problems, and they'll be like, you know what, I'm not even sure what I'm doing here. Let me go back to the problem and read it again. And be like, oh boy, I made a mistake. I should go in this direction. So you should avoid all of that by just taking your time. Read the problem. Make sure you understand what's going on. Okay. So once you understand the problem, what you want to do is model or visualize the problem if possible. And of course, this particular problem, uh, we can come up with a nice, lovely sketch of what's going on. Now, what we're going to have to do here is make some assumptions. We're going to have to simplify this problem. And you'll uh, see what I'm talking about in just one second. So what we want to do is kind of um, draw a sketch that models what's going on. So we have a flagpole. Three meters tall, it's cast in a shadow. Then we have a nearby tree, it's cast in a shadow as well. So let's go ahead and just come up with a quick sketch to see what's going on. All right, so here is the ground. Here is our flagpole and here is our tree. So we have a, a flagpole, it's three meters tall. It's cast in a shadow of five meters. And then we have this tree. We don't know how tall the tree is. Of course, that is the question, but it's cast in a shadow of 82 meters. 
Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're talking about uh, some assumptions here. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, state that right now. So what we have to do, what you don't want to do uh, in uh, math problems, okay, particularly those of you that are students, is overcomplicate the information in the problem. Now, what I mean by that is this. Well, you know, it doesn't say that the tree is perfect, per, uh, perpendicular to the ground. Okay, <laughs> I meant to say the word perfectly perpendicular, but I think that's uh, being redundant. But uh, we have to just make some assumptions that the ground is perfectly level, right? It's not doing this. So our flagpole isn't this way. The tree isn't like this. So, you know, it's okay to take liberty and be like, all right, now the ground is going to be nice and flat and uh, our flagpole and our tree are going to be perpendicular uh, to the ground. That is an important kind of assumption to make. If not, if we could, um, you know, if we're talking about something at an angle, then that is, uh, you know, a different level of mathematics. So uh, anyways, so hopefully you understand that point. Never overcomplicate the problem. And if, um, let's suppose you are taking a test or an exam, and if you're not sure, always raise your hand, ask your teacher. Uh, they may or may not tell you, but, you know, always, um, Take the simplest version of a math problem. They're, they're not designed to overcomplicate a situation. Okay, so enough of that. All right, so here's what's going on here. We have this flagpole and its shadow, and we have this um, tree and its shadow. So what can we kind of interpret here? Well, we can interpret that the sun is hanging out way over here someplace, right? If the shadow is casting this way. So the height of whatever object, okay, uh, that is standing up perpendicular to the ground and its shadow, these, the height to the shadow is going to be in uh, proportion, okay? So they're going to have the same proportion. doesn't make a difference if we have a flagpole here or a tree or whatever. Uh, the height to the shadow, that proportion is going to be the same. Okay, so we need to understand that. So what we have here is uh, a triangle. Okay, we have a height to the space to height to the space so we can uh, set up a proportion. And what we're going to do here, we'll use a variable x to represent the height of the tree. Okay, now uh, before we set up a proportion, let's kind of establish a ratio. Okay, so we have the height to the shadow. So we can kind of maybe uh, write a fraction this way, the height of whatever to its shadow is what? Well, the height over here is 3 to the shadow is 5. This height is what? Well, the height is x, right? We don't know that. And the shadow is 82, okay? But we do know that these two fractions are in proportion, um, or these two ratios are uh, in proportion, meaning that they are uh, equivalent, okay, they're equal to one another, and by definition, uh, two equal fractions is a proportion, okay, so hopefully, kind of understand what I'm talking about here, uh, if you are a bit lost, you're like, yeah, I don't really understand ratios and proportions, well, then maybe you want to start with a little bit simpler uh, problem, but uh, let's go to continue on now, so now that we understand what's going on, we can set up this proportion right here, okay, now, we have to be very careful that uh, we are establishing the same uh, ratios. In other words, the height to the shadow. Now you could do it from the shadow to the height, that's fine, but I think it's just easier to um, have the height, we're comparing the height to its shadow and the height to its shadow over here. So this is the tree. We don't know the height of the tree, but we know the length of the shadow, it's 82. Uh, we know the height of the flagpole, it's three, and we know its shadow is five. So this ratio, okay, and this ratio here are going to be the same, i.e., this is going, they're going to be proportional. Okay. Now, ratio and proportion problems are um, hugely common. <laughs> I don't even know if that's uh, uh, proper grammar, but anyways, that's my kind of way to express that. Hey, you know what? You got to know if there's one thing you must uh, really master, especially if you are a math student, uh, that is uh, ratios, rates, and proportions. Very, very, very common type of math problem. All right, so hopefully you understand what's going on here. And if you do, all we need to uh, do now is to solve for the variable x. So we have 3 over uh, 5 is equal to x over 82. How do we solve for x? Well, let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribed to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't stop this uh, lovely math video if I didn't have to, uh, you know, ask for your support, okay? Uh, you know, I think... Um, 
one of the things that I'm definitely not shy about is to say, hey, I need your help. Now, I need your help. Why do I need your help? Well, I need your help so I can help others, right? I am a math teacher, but I need students to help, okay? Now, hopefully you're getting something out of this video, and that, if that's the case, the best way to show your support for what I do is to hit that subscribe button. Now, the subscribe button, when you hit that, what it happens is it tells YouTube that, you know, hey, maybe this guy's not so bad, and it pushes out my content further, meaning that I can find more people to help. Okay, now, you know, when it comes to learning mathematics, you want to try to find a teacher that you like and understand. And there's all different types of personalities out there, uh, a lot of great teachers, um, and you know, there's a variety of ways to teach mathematics. But if people like my teaching style, well, then I want to connect with them, okay? But uh, anyways, I can't do that without your assistance. So hit that subscribe button, and if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. And the objective here is to solve this proportion. Now a proportion by definition is two equal fractions. Let me give you a simple example. If I have the fraction one half, let's think of another fraction that is equal to one half. How about maybe like four over eight? We could have five over 10, three over six, 100 over 200, it doesn't make a difference, right? So again, a proportion is two equal fractions. Now, because ratios and rates are fractions in and of themselves, you can also define a proportion as two equal rates or ratios, but effectively, it, it's simply just two equal fractions. Now, let's take a look at a property, and this property we're going to be using to solve uh, for this variable x. Uh, this is a critical property of proportions, and that is the cross product. In other words, if I multiply across, uh, the products are going to be equal. So in other words, 2 times 4 is what? Well, 2 times 4 is 8, and that is equal to 1 times 8. So 8 is equal to 8. So when you have a valid proportion, the cross products are true. So we're trying to solve for x here, so all we have to do is use the cross product. We're just going to cross multiply to solve for x. All right, so 5 times x is 5x. 3 times 82 is going to be 3 times 82. So 3 times 82 is 246. So now we have this uh, basic uh, linear equation. 5x is equal to 246. To solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 5. So x will be equal to 246 divided by 5. And that, of course, will be 49.2. But again, remember, we're working with meters as our unit of measure. But that is what the height of the tree is. We have to go back to our model here. Remember, x we um, um, kind of um, assign as the height of the tree. OK, so hopefully this all makes sense. And if it doesn't, you know, at least you know your starting point and uh, what you need to work on. Now, if you want to know more about ratios and proportions and all this kind of good stuff, check out my various courses. You can see uh, those courses and the links to those courses in the description. But uh, this is pretty much a first year um, algebra, even more like pre-algebra, that kind of level. So. Again, if you need help with ratios, proportions, you can check out uh, those courses in the description. Also, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.